We're back with another episode to continue the celebration of 50 years of hip hop. Yes, sir. Um, and I think throughout this whole thing, we we kind of touched on the most important uh, areas and 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 aspects of hip hop in the in the business of music. But um, this this one here is is the most or one of the most important elements of hip hop, the rapper, the MC. Yeah. So today, um, we decided to sit with. If people know me, they know this is one of my favorites um, for many different reasons, but most importantly, uh, just lyrics and presence and, and and content and just throughout the years, the things that he's been able to give to the ecosystem of hip hop and one of the most important rebrands, I think, in hip hop that we have ever seen that most people don't give enough praise to, but I will today. We have joining us one third of one of the most illest, most important groups in hip hop history, the Locks. Today we have Styles P S P the Ghost joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. Love is love. I appreciate the praise, man. First of all, um, thank you for uh coming through today and kicking it with us, giving us some of your time. We appreciate that. Um, I've had the opportunity just to tell you over the years how much you've meant to me. Uh, how much uh, you. you you you've meant to just my love for rap and and hip hop music over the years, but today you know now that hip hop is fifty years fifty years old, um, we wanted to have a different conversation with somebody that has seen so many different aspects of hip hop, so many different sides of hip hop, so many different changes in hip hop. Um, so we want to start. Let's start at the very the very beginning of styles. Uh, in Yonkers, when did you know that hip hop was something that you wanted to be a part of, something that you wanted to give to, and something that you knew was going to be a, a, a very important part of your DNA? Or does it start in, in Queens? No, nah, it starts in Yonkers. Okay. I'm just trying I, to. I, li I live in Queens thing. from zero to seven. And then. Um, the Gangsta seven, and Gentleman album just I'm got born a in, bunch I'm, of burn. Yeah, in, I'm in born my in Corona, Corona Queens. <laughs> I'm definitely born in Corona Queens. <laughs> yep. But I li I've lived in Yonkers since seven years old. So yeah. I'm a Yonkers. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. The, to the day I die. I'm yeah. born in Queens, though. So yeah. Yeah. I have that. But I, I want to say um, probably it was single digits, though. Mm. I want to say around maybe. Uh, or. Around nine years old, I pretty much knew, uh, I would say, uh, somewhere from nine to 11, I knew that hip hop was something I wanted to be invested in. Um, for me, e even so from a bigger standpoint, because when I was young, I remember uh, always hearing Wolfman Jack on the radio. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm probably too young to remember mm -hmm. who yeah. Wolfman Jack was. Yeah. But where, he had where a very distinctive voice and I remember just hearing him on the radio and uh you know um classic R&B tunes and, and certain things to then I just distinctly distinctively remembering hearing the message and mm. it kind of that was the first like I would say uh sonic art to me okay that was the first time that I I, I, I couldn't describe it because I was too young back then to kind of grasp what was happening mm -hmm. but to hear the picture that you view mm -hmm. painted, yeah, it was just, I don't know, it just kind of, kind of hit me very, very different, mm -hmm. like you know, and um, and then the first visual time I knew I wanted to be in um, hip hop was watching B Street. Mm. Okay, B Street did it for me. Yeah, like, I, I, I wanted to live Lee's life at the time. Yeah, it was not even from the me. music. Yeah. Not like he he didn't do music, yeah. But it was just a lifestyle like he was living as a youth. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be the youth that was cool around older people that older people thought was cool. Yeah. Like I wanted to be upbeat, doing things that were um, you know, pretty cool, and I yeah. wanted to look fresh. Yeah. For me, it was time. Crush Groove, and I remember always uh, when I was going to my babysitters. She always had the disorderlies with the fat boys. I yeah. watched that on VHS yeah. every day after school. So for me, it's B Street. Yeah. It's a little before that, but it's around yeah. the same. Yeah, around, around the same. The same Crush time. Groove came after. It was yeah. more money in Crush Groove, definitely. It, exactly, exactly. <laughs> for sure. Um, what gave you the, the confidence to write your first rhyme at that point? Was it something you wanted to just be around or something you knew you wanted to do? I think it was just 
uh, kind of a natural thing. Like, mm. I think, uh, not to get deep, but to be honest, like, I think a lot of us during that time, subconscious, now that I can look back in retrospect yeah. and, and go, all right, look, I could look back now. When you don't have something of your own that you could really relate to, mm -hmm. when that thing comes around, you just know you want to be part of it. Right. Yeah. It, it was like, you know, um, yeah, gentlemen are a few years younger than me. Mm -hmm. So just imagine a world without hip hop, then hip hop coming. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Even though my world without hip hop wasn't that long. Right. Yeah. But just imagine something new coming that you know you're built to be part of. You don't really have the words to describe it. Mm -hmm. You just know that that's the life for you. Right. Like that was something I knew I wanted to do. Like it was weird because even from being from Yonkers at 12 years old telling somebody that I wanted to be a rapper, man, they was like, man, you like, thank God for my mom. She always supported my dreams and never Very shut me down, which I think gave me the room to grow in my mind and believe I could do it. Mm -hmm. But most, mostly anybody I would tell I was like, I was saying some fucking alien shit to them. Right. <laughs> like I wanted to do something that was unfathomable. Because it was so new at that point. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, so uh, I think at a very early age, I know I wanted to be part of it because I believe for people who don't really have much, you don't really know, but it's like church wasn't doing it for me. School yeah. wasn't doing it for me. But you knew uh, you wanted to connect to something. I know I wanted to connect to something. And yeah. that was the, when that something came about, I knew yeah. that's it. Right. Like for certain, like right. that's all the way it. So it probably started for me more like that. Like just looking for something to connect to and that made sense. And finding it. And uh, after the message hit, what was like the first artist or movement that you attached yourself to? I would say the first, I, I can't say one particular artist, but like for me, when, um, shout out to Run, shout out to L, mm -hmm. shout out to all, you know, Fat Boys, mm -hmm. shout out to, you know, um, all the pioneers of it mm -hmm. that that came before it. But I think the era of KRS, Cool mm. G, Kane, and Rakim just kind of really blew my mind. Mm -hmm. It was more so of, uh, even now to this day, listening to them blows my mind. Just that time period of where they were able to take one level of how people were playing with words yeah. and then being Elevated. able to take it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Like for me, that their wordplay was so insane, mm -hmm. and there's many others. Um, Jungle Brothers, mm -hmm. um, yeah. the Native Tongue Movement, De La Soul, love them. Mm -hmm. God bless Plug Two, right. um, Light, mm -hmm. Latifah, Ultra Magnetics. That's a Sonic, mm -hmm. Public Enemy. Uh, it was just that. It's so many Chub Rock, Special Ed, Law Finesse. Mm. It's so many people that ring in my mind when you just hear somebody spit some shit and it just kind of like you're watching a growth, you're watching an elevation. So for me to, to my, I would say specifically Cool G, Kane, KRS and Rock him, that era kind of solidified it for me of knowing this is something I absolutely have to be in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, ever before that was like, you know, Sugar Hill, uh, Melly Mel, Flash, even running them was like, I know I wanted to be part of it or have something to do with it. But right. for me, them four grandmasters I named was the, in my mind, and mm -hmm. EPMD, I can't forget about them. Oh, yeah. That would be crazy. <laughs> right. Uh, those, kind of, those kind of deliveries and the way they were putting their bars and just saying things were, were mm -hmm. it was too incredible for me. It was like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you're, you're watching something grow. Mm -hmm. And even then I was too too young to understand what I was feeling or understanding, but like that was just a different time for that amount of wordplay. Like, you know, we're in an era now where nobody shit, even technology, you rewind in a whole song. I come from an era where you're going back and you you you're deciphering bar by bar right. what somebody is saying. Now is that we in a 
And I ain't knocking it, but we're in a beat in the hook era. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And, you know, the wave and the vibe and what the vibe is. Yeah. But before that, it was kind of like what this person is saying mm-hmm. and the way they're saying it. And then arguing with your man or who's saying what better <laughs> right. and how right. they're saying it. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, deciphering yeah. it. Yeah. But even uh, like going into the studio for the first time with everyone that you just named, how did you feel like you could even contribute? Like where shit is moving from flashes to rock him where the shit gets a little bit more lyrical. Was that intimidating? Like what the fuck can I contribute? Now, I don't how, think- how do I even push this shit I think when you're hungry you're not intimidated yeah Mm. like I don't think I don't think intimate I mean nervousness is a part of anything and and figuring out how to conquer something Mm -hmm. and and having your down moments is part of everything but I don't think when you're hungry intimidation is the the main factor it's more so like the lesson of how am I gonna learn to do this very well yeah like you know what I mean but when you want part of something and you know you belong there, mm-hmm. intimidation doesn't fit in the schedule. With, like with you that, have to, you have to figure out the things that do intimidate you. I mean, you're going to be intimidated by something, but learning how to conquer the what's intimidating you is part of the what I think makes an MC an MC. Mm-hmm. And, and with that hunger, did you consciously, I mean, of course, looking back, but consciously at that time, did you know exactly what you wanted to contribute? At that time? Um, nah, if, if, I think when any really M- MC is starting off, you just want to be acknowledged mm. from your neighborhood that yeah. you have dope rhymes. It, I wasn't even thinking statewide, <laughs> let alone yeah. citywide. Yeah, worldwide. Worldwide. Like, you know what I mean? You just kind of want to be acknowledged by your peers who's from where you're from that do the same thing you do. Mm-hmm. And I think it all kind of starts that way. And you, you, you play a part of wanting to be something dope locally. Yeah. This is the era before. There's no Instagram. There's no Twitter. There's no social media. There's no even cell phone. Mm. You go into your man's house, yell at the window, knock on his door. Like, I come around when pay phones were still out. Yeah. So it wasn't so, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I don't think today's generation could imagine walking to a, a phone they in the booth got, in the middle yeah, of nowhere. They just got rid of them. Putting quarters the last, in. The last one they just got and, rid of. And speaking. Like, you know what month. I mean? Yeah, that, that, that seems like such a fucking... And you don't think about it. When you had to use the the the, 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 the pay phones, how many numbers you memorized off the Facts. dome was crazy. Oh, I, I thought about that the other day. I was like, yo, I used to... We used to have quarters and just be calling people mm-hmm. all day with no paper, no book, and just yeah, remembering nothing, numbers. Just remember it. That's almost impossible. I, be, I forget my own cell number. Now. Yeah, sure, for sure. Oh, I, it's crazy. It's I don't even know my mom's cell number. I know, I know our home phone that still has been the same for thirty years. Right. I don't know her cell phone number off the top of my head. Right. That's scary <laughs> That's when you crazy. think about it. It's, it's it's fucking scary. Um. Well, how did someone get on at that time? As far as how enough, MC has changed it so much, <laughs> important to being dope with who's around you at first. Mm. Like yeah. your world back then is smaller. Is 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 bound to the cafeteria who you see after school yeah. you see on your block yeah. who's around that um, immediate car hood while the while somebody's banging on it or yeah. lunch table and then it goes it gets a little bigger as you as you grow up then you have the as you're growing in your craft then you have the hunger for more mm-hmm. to want to make more people hear you mm-hmm. and more people hear you because you have that belief in yourself where did um the locks come into play when did when did y'all know like all right we're gonna do this together collectively high school like i i know about um she can kiss us from the north side of yonkers mm-hmm. i'm from the south side mm-hmm. so i know about how dope they was in junior high right i got to meet them in junior high but i went end up going to high school with them okay and um like i said everything starts neighborhood wise mm-hmm. and town wise so uh they were always two people I heard of and and, and knew about that was dope. Mm-hmm. Then getting to meet them and know them and um, go to school with them was a whole different ball game. Like what people don't know about um, she can kiss. They were very professional at a young age. Mm. Like what I met them, I was good at outside rhyming outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. bang the beat, hit a beatbox, bang on a car, mm-hmm. bang on a mailbox, mm-hmm. and get the verses off. But mm-hmm. at at a young age. Shit, ninth grade, they knew how to use the studio. Mm. They they knew to make verses, mm-hmm. make hooks, 
make a song. So even like I, I was used to people outside. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mostly everybody was. So to see somebody on besides them, like X was already a legend. Mm -hmm. Where we from, he knew how to make, you know, he you hear his shit on on tape. Mm -hmm. Ring it throughout the neighborhood, probably the whole of Yonkers. Mm -hmm. I would, I would bet my two pinkies on. Mm -hmm. He was already known and a legend when we when we young we were young. But I, she can kiss. Those was the first two young people I seen that knew how to actually trans transfer. Those are the first people I've been around that was actually nice outside mm -hmm. and then go to a studio and knew what they were, and doing. Knew what yeah. they were doing. And at this time, it was rails. It wasn't wow. even tape. This is real yeah. or real. Like, yeah. So if you fuck up, they got to cut the reel, yeah. tape it back together, do yeah. that. So their professionalism at a young age was very impressionable upon me. Mm. Like, I remember going home, like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> it's like that was the this. thing. Like, yeah. you speak about being intimidated. That's why I say anything that intimidates you, a real MC is going to figure out how how do I conquer this? Like, right. mm. like you know what I mean? Like, it's like I, I would be outside and feel good about it. But in the studio, I would feel inadequate because they were so fucking professional right. yeah. at what they were doing and knew how to do it in a, in a unique. And you didn't see that from young people. Like, right. So mm. it was like. And I've been in, in a studio with, uh, shout out to my OG, Dusty Mike, mm -hmm. him before. And so I knew what the studio was like, mm -hmm. but I never seen somebody young in my age group that knew, maneuver, knew, knew, that knew, maneuver and knew what the fuck they was doing. Yeah. And to me, that was crazy. It was like, holy shit. Like, um, so it was impressionable upon me. It was in, intimidating, but something I knew I was like, oh, no, nah, I got it. Mm. I got to I got to figure out how the fuck to do this because how you sound when you're not on the mic is how not when you're hearing yourself in the headphones totally and yeah. you're on the mic yeah. and the beats on and you got to time it. That's a whole nother beast you have to learn how to conquer. Did the MC ego kick in at that point though of like, I'm not doing no group shit. Like I fuck with y'all. Nah. Y'all cool. But. Nah, I ain't never had an <laughs> MC ego because I think um still always sharp and still no matter. For sure. When you come up in the hood, like no matter... What you do, if somebody else does it well and you have a, if you don't totally dislike them, mm -hmm. like you figure out a way to make it work with each other. I think that's just natural energy yeah. of having the same kind of goals connect. Like yeah. you just genuinely, genuinely and generally tend to gravitate to people who do the same shit you, mm -hmm. you do or the same shit you're into. Or at least you should because we see or a you lot should. of people- see somebody doing something they want to do and it goes another way. They hate on it. They, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's because yeah, like now we're in the though. technology age, so it's different. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But back then, it's more so uh, of word of mouth. Yeah. General, mm -hmm. just being in the same space, doing mm -hmm. what you're doing and you're either going to fuck with each other or not. Nowadays, you have so much your thought is not just your thought. Right. Even between you and his thought. Right. It's millions of other thoughts mm -hmm. chiming in mm -hmm. on y'all fucking thoughts, so that makes it kind of difficult. Let's go to um. How do you how does how does the Mona Lisa just want to please you record come about? And this is ninety five, I believe. Mona's from Yonkers. Yeah, we're from Yonkers, and I think that just kind of I don't exactly remember. I'm high too, <laughs> <laughs> very high naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, so, styles is I just remember uh, we know Mona. She from Yonkers. Yeah, from Yonkers. Mm. She's she's working. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing what we're doing, and it's, I think that was just supposed to come up because that was I was I would think I was a freshman in high school when that record came out, and that was one of the hottest songs of the year by yeah. far. Every party, every school event, everybody was playing that record, and to me, I think that was that's my first recollection of that's a, a good one you're a real hip-hop historian yeah that's my really first job because i always forget that is one of the first that's one of the first jumps i remember from there y'all yeah it used to pop and it was dope because it was the vibe of here's the the cute girl with the the melody but then these dudes that's rapping on it gave us a chance in the party to get our yeah. shit off because we could rap that part yeah while the girls was grooving and singing the moaners no though yeah i was outside a while so was no doubt i see i see <laughs> I see, baby. <laughs> it's just been moisturizing. The skin yeah, looks great. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but even more bringing up uh, shit, 95, 
to now, what was it like specifically with you and the locks maneuvering through Bad Boy, Rough Riders? Y'all stayed relevant through a lot of corporate bullshit, which usually kills rappers or groups immediately, especially when you're dealing with conglomerates like what a bad boy is. That could be the end of you. Even leaving Rough Riders, that could be the end of you. What was it like maneuvering through as... The brotherhood and the craft, man. You love your brothers, you love your craft. And I think we always, uh, we came in with a chip on our shoulder. So mm -hmm. I think that chip on the shoulder makes it easier to uh, navigate the terrain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To not really worry about when things get turbulent. Mm -hmm. Like uh, a lot of people get shaken up when their life gets shaken up. But if you if you look at it from an aspect of, of how I came in, where I came in, how I came about, and you give yourself enough kudos for that, then you have two partners to do the same thing. That kind of gives you more strength. It's like... Uh, you have to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. I think I think if you believe in yourself and you dedicate yourself mm -hmm. to your craft, like you don't you'll weather the storm. Right. You'll weather the storm. Like there's been there's been aspects of my life during my whole life that have been more uh significant to me than music. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I don't let what's happening in music, as I believe my partners do the same, mm -hmm. dictate where our life is going to go. We don't let what what people are saying that everybody else is saying kind of navigate the course for us. Like, you, you, you make your own course. Yeah. You make your own course. Those who are meant to be will stand the test of time. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then to understand that you're not going to always be on, on top and just figure out how to stay... Yeah, stay on that, stay on the cycle, mm -hmm. and you'll be right back there. Did you ever feel resentment towards towards music through any of that? My whole from beginning to now, <laughs> yeah, so from beginning <laughs> to now. So it's not, it's a, it's. I love the craft. Yeah, I love my craft. Uh, it's the politics. I man. love people who do the craft well. Yeah. I don't deal with the politics yeah. of it all, which, but I have to say is. It's that's helped move me into who I am today. Yeah. Like that exact thing of 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 saying, I don't like this part of the game. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't dig this part. I don't dig how people act. Mm -hmm. I don't dig how what people do. Mm -hmm. Uh and today's and today's today's proper wording for the situation we in, mm -hmm. I think, which wasn't the wording back then, but it's the same thing. Like you, you could you could let the algorithm make you or you could start making the algorithm. Yeah. Right. And that's just the right. the bottom line of it. There's people I'm not I'm not making songs because that's what everybody say is hot right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna try to make that type of song if it's not organic to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna worry about what everybody else is worried about. Right. I'm not gonna try to fit in the way everybody's gonna fit in. I'm gonna be comfortable in the world I'm I'm in. And those who are like me or like minded like me or understand that and that'll that'll make you stand the test of time. And uh it's funny bring that up like outside of the longevity of the locks music business wise y'all have been you particular have been such a great example of that where I'm not even talking about the refrigerator incident. I'm talking more so when you and 50 got on the phone with Angie. That's a moment that I don't think people talk about mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, I would diss each other back and forth and then had such a grown man regular conversation on the phone in the height of bullshit. Mm -hmm. Where that should have that should have been a moment of a, a bunch of ignorant back and forth shit. You and 50 had an amazing conversation on the radio at that time. Did that mind state help with longevity? Where you you could have had the moment and was like, nah, fifth, let's let's talk. <laughs> the my mindset of longevity comes from outside of music. Yeah. Mm. Like life outside of music is, music is one thing. Like, like I get to do what I love and make money from it. Right. And travel the world doing it and mm -hmm. go different places and be recognized from it. Mm -hmm. My mind state comes from those who are just like me who didn't get a chance to do what I do. Mm -hmm. Those who are like me that's from where I'm from in places that's like where I'm from who've never had the opportunity mm -hmm. to live a certain way. 
my mom's say comes from Sam. I got a South African mom mm-hmm. that came from a whole nother country, mm-hmm. made herself, and that used to tell me the shit you think is hard is not really hard. Right. This is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not as tough as you think. Mm-hmm. This is tough. Like, yeah. uh, my mind state comes from my friends who, you know, showed me grit, grime, toughness, and still loyalty throughout not even feeling good. Mm-hmm. So my mind state comes from everything that's outside of music. Right. And I just apply it. Apply that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of the music is one world. Like if you let if you let your fame and who people think you are and who you think you are. Like, I'm a very down to earth artist. I'm I'm very accessible. I'm very touchable. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Uh, I know I'm fortunate enough to be able to live off doing something I love and being make it into my craft. So that keeps me kind of on a of plane of just being tranquil. Yeah, like to say the least. Because if you let certain things in music navigate who you are mm-hmm. you'll crash because one year that yeah. shit might be the greatest shit to do and then two years later that was the stupidest shit to do mm-hmm. like so you can't kind of go by that you got to kind of go by who you are just fitting into the situation mm-hmm. um the situation with 50 is is basically is it's the same kind of shit you think about it it's dudes from the street who have been smart enough to navigate through the world and and get to somewhere else like mm-hmm. um and at the time it wasn't that wasn't an emotional beef yeah that That's was right. an emotional problem like yeah. people always look at rap beef like beef nobody's been touched nobody got hands on nobody's mm-hmm. been hurt mm-hmm. as to where we've both been outside where that situation has been different right. so that he probably looked at it the same way I looked at it yeah and it's just being too and you don't want to, as a young businessman, you ain't trying to be, and you headed for somewhere, you got something in your mind or where you want to go. You ain't trying to be um, stupid. Like, That's, I, I admired his, I, I, I admired what he did. He just came up after me. Yeah. Right. A few years behind me. Um, I, I admire what he did with the industry. I admire how he was able to turn shit into sugar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To turn a bad story into... One of the best. One of the best stories ever. And then translate it to the world. And then also remain himself. Right. Throughout the time, even to this date. Like yeah. he's he's one of the people that make me laugh the most because he's fucking crazy, but he's <laughs> right. just a genius <laughs> at the same time. It's yeah. like a that's like the shit you come up loving in the hood. So right. you, you always, you know, you, even with anybody who we ever had a particular problem. I never stopped playing their music. Like right. I'll be in the car. That's real. I'm playing their shit. Yeah, like, I've, yeah. I've played the the diss records to us. When like, oh, that's a that's a that's a slick shit. That, oh, yeah. that's some funny shit. Yeah, oh, that's a, like you know what I mean. So you learn to not take nothing personal. Like I don't. I'm not really taking it nothing personal if nothing personal really happened. Like yeah, but. I- and I just wanted to highlight that call because I, I feel like that's something yeah. that gets lost. Somebody told in me that a couple months ago. Like yo, that, that was a beautiful representation. Delegated, yeah. Like that shit was yeah. amazing mm-hmm. to listen to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of where it, it quote unquote could have went. To, but oh yeah, it could have. Who cares about bad. that? Like yeah. that, that is just something I just feel like no one really highlights. We we all mm-hmm. go back to the bullshit. You know why you don't we don't talk it? about? It's not bullshit. Like you say, <laughs> people go back to the bullshit, bullshit. But if you do something creative, that's pushing forward. And you learn how to delegate di- things different because it's like, if you look at it, any dude who's been in the actual the shit, it don't even got to be real street beef. Just think about fucking high school. Right. Or junior high, somebody that you you went, mm-hmm. you know, you had blows with. Right. Like after a certain amount of time, you're going to figure out, I right, I'm fucking you up in June, <laughs> but I got to chill for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. We got to figure a way to, <laughs> to, to, this. to meet it. I'm fucking you up in June, in <laughs> January. Like, I'm going to yeah, fuck this like, nigga up in June. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to find a way to meet in the middle and coexist yeah, because yeah. I can't be scrapping with you. Every day, we're not doing this every day. I ain't yeah, doing this every fucking day. No, 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 no. Doing school. I'm, I'm like, sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, not doing that. Like, this yeah. ain't going to work. We got to figure out a way. Right. Fucking this nigga up in June. Right. Are we going to piece it up? We got to piece it up yeah. way to, even if we don't piece it up yeah. we gotta, we gotta find coexist. a way to have that mutual respect absolutely. for each other and absolutely. coexist there's like many people I had childhood problems with that are more like a buddies of mine nowadays like, I think you know I think I mean? naturally that's how it goes the older you get you like yeah. what was that ever even about like I don't know one day I just thought yeah. you ain't fuck with me I, yeah. I thought you didn't fuck with me but that's a natural thing because it's like if you're walking on the street right mm-hmm. 
think about on your normal day to day life. You ain't getting in, the, in blows with nobody, but right. there's days like that. You say you see strangers every day. Right. There's a certain stranger you don't know why you're speaking to them, but it's like, what's up? What's up? Yeah. Oh, you get my yeah. head not. Yeah. You ain't doing that to every stranger. Right. But yeah. certain strangers, it's just like. All right, what's up, bro? Yeah. What's up, bro? See each other enough. You yeah. see what you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just say what's up, even strangers. Right. Sometimes you're walking in the airport, some people's a smile, a head nod. Yeah. And some people you're just fucking walking by. That's right. energy. That's right. That's that's the way of life. Yeah. Mm. The um one of the most or one of the dopest battles that we probably ever had in hip hop is with Kiss and Beans. Now, I always we always used to talk in the hood like and something that I, I, lo- I love about the locks is y'all, y'all never seem to have any public issues with each other. If y'all did, it was always behind the scenes. Y'all handled as brothers. It was never nothing that people on the outside ever felt. But in that in that battle with Kiss and Beans, uh, Beans says, uh, I could tell why Styles say the ghost and shit. And I could tell in your style he write most of your shit. When you heard that line from, from Beans... What did that do if it did anything between your relationship with Kiss? Nothing. No, nothing outside can interfere with our relationship. Right. It's not a relationship. It's a brotherhood. Right. A brotherhood and a relationship are two two different two different sure. things. Like, sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't do anything. One, I, it ain't the truth. Right. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> we got similar styles. Right. We work, we've been working together for years. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And then two, if you let that, that's the one thing where you ain't a, a true brother. Like one, yeah. between the three of us, we know when we get in that booth, I don't plan for you to like Sheik or Kiss shit more. Right. I wanna, I wanna, I want you as a, a fan to say, I like Pete shit the best every time. Right. But when it doesn't happen, I'm comfortable and I'm cool and I understand. Right. Yeah. I right. understand and I'm not mad at you. Right. My whole career, I got, yo, P, I fuck with you. Sheik, my nigga, though. Yeah, yeah, yo, P, yeah. I fuck with you. I love kids, though. Like, yeah, yeah. I was I just called Maul the other day. Yeah. The team win is the team win. That comes first. Absolutely. Yeah. As, a, as a brother. And Absolutely. A, it, it, it's part of this thing of ours. That comes first. So long as that, long as he's good, mm-hmm. I'm good. Right. Well, if one of us is hot, all three of us is hot. Or right. That's going to help right. us or, or be at the same time. So I don't have that. But long as... I don't come in that verse. I'm not coming in the in the studio for you to like anybody's shit better. Mm-hmm. I don't get on a song with anybody for you to like anybody's shit better. Right. If it happens, I'm cool. I'm comfortable. To each right. His own. Right. You got what you're gonna prefer. You got what you're gonna like. Yeah. Some people, you might have grew up like Kiss more. Yeah. Some people, you might have grew up like me more. Mm-hmm. Some people, either you don't you don't know what it is, but to let somebody from the outside, yeah, be able to say something do something or react to something and that moved me to yeah. feel a certain way about my brother. That means brother. it's a weakness there. That means I'm weak. Yeah. The yeah. weakness would be me. Right. For allowing it to seep into to what I do think or believe. Now, you said uh, when you and Fifth had y'all thing, you were still listening to shit. When that battle was happening... We at, still listen. Y'all was... Did y'all... Was y'all All did, of us was y'all as a group. I'm not just talking about me. Right. When I say I... Like, all of us as a group, anytime... We've been in anything. We still played everything from the- That's fire. The, everything that's fire, anything yeah. that was dissing us. Yeah. Anything like, one, if you know early early us, you know, if you said something about us, we respond very fast. For sure. There's no, yeah, it's not che- going to be check no me and Miss Jackson out within <laughs> yeah, a week like, of each other. <laughs> that'd be a few minutes. Yeah. You said what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like we're my going My favorite time in high school. Yeah. Shut up. Sit and wait. <laughs> like, that's, that's yeah. just how we got, but- yeah. Even before that, if we liked you before that and we was playing shit from you, we didn't stop. That, yeah, that doesn't stop it. That's some real shit. We didn't stop. Like, and we were still fans of those people, even even going through shit. It's yeah. like, nah, I fuck with that. Like, yeah. I can't not, yeah. not play this <laughs> yeah. shit. This shit fire. It takes too much for me not <laughs> yeah, to play this shit. Like, this shit and, like, like, and you know, it's And the, why have rap beef it, with someone you don't yeah, respect? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's right. like, you know, you gotta you gotta be kind of intrigued by that and, yeah. and be cool with it at the same time. How did you approach things different from the locks to solo like of course in locks albums you guys definitely have deep records and are talking about certain things when it came to gangster the gentleman and like time is money 
that shit felt like therapy sessions. Well, you to got me. three versions instead of one. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you got to say shit that you may not say about them because there's no room to say it. Right. Yeah. Or you don't really want to express that part. Mm -hmm. While he's coming from here, he's coming from here. You want to keep the trajectory the same. Yeah. <clears throat> What's funny about Locks music, and to be honest with you, most people won't know. Like, if we get a beat, like, and I've seen it happen on enough times to know, like, say we get a beat and we all say we're doing a beat, somehow the verses, even if whether we share them with each other or not, will coincide. Mm. They'll work. It'll just be like that same thought pattern that I had and way I thought I would approach it. They did the same exact thing. Right. Muscle memory. That's just yeah. the, yeah, and, and kinetic energy. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, mo most people would have thought, like, just say, all right, we, we send each other a beat on Friday and say we go lay this shit on Tuesday and we off running, doing this, mm -hmm. doing that, doing that. And then we all go to the studio. The verses will coincide. That's crazy. The verses are going to coincide. It's like no one has to go redo their verse, remake it, come from a different point. Mm -hmm. It's just going to naturally mm -hmm. coincide. And I think that just comes from... Just that real connection. Energy and connection. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't fake chemistry. Right. Of course. You can fake a lot of things in life, yeah. but not chemistry. Right. Like that's the one thing. And I think that's why a lot of groups, you ask what, what keeps us together is our brotherhood and chemistry goes beyond the music. Mm -hmm. Music is just part of it. Mm. So it's like, uh, it, it just is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, it's it's beyond it's beyond music. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Is is our brotherhood is just beyond music, which makes the chemistry always always work. And you guys might be the only group that I can think of. Nah, in, MOP in, didn't break up. De La Soul didn't break up. Cypress Hill. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a bunch of groups that didn't. But that we wouldn't even know. Of yeah, course, every, just, every there's always internal beef, no matter how close people are, family, everything. But. That it's we don't you, know. It's how you just we don't know any Yeah, and it's not beef. Like people, of like the not. word beef is, beef, the wrong, is beef is the wrong word. Over. Do we always agree? No. Do we have yeah. differences? Yes. But do we handle those differences like brothers? A fucking million percent. Right. We want to discuss what it is, the differences, how we think about you it. Get my past point it. of view. You give me your point of view, like this. Besides that, there's times in my life where I know. That one of them two, if I'm doing something that's out of pocket, it'd be a P that's out of pocket. Yeah. Don't do that. Like, yeah. And that's not just with music in real life. Like, mm -hmm. don't do it like that, bro. Mm -hmm. Don't go about it in that way. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you're fucking with a certain part of your life if mm -hmm. you go down the road doing this. Like, right. So that's bigger than... If you got that with somebody, you don't want to... Like, why risk it over... A dollar bill, they print and burn money every fucking day. Right. Yeah. This is, you could lose money, gain it, lose money, gain it. Mm -hmm. We all have had money, not had money, had mm -hmm. a lot of money. Too. Like mm -hmm. that's just life with money, but to value who a person is, mm -hmm. and especially if you got love for someone, that should be beyond money. Money shouldn't be able to tamper with that. Right. And if money can tamper with that, that means the love wasn't right. as genuine as it was spoken of Absolutely. in the first place. And that's, that's just right. life. And and now in 2023, which album is your favorite between Money, Power, Respect, and We Are the Streets? We Are the Streets, I'm gonna say, is sonically my favorite. Okay. Uh Money Respect, though, Money Power Respect is us getting money, respect, and power <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from from our craft and being able to yeah. do a certain story. So it's like um but we are the streets. We have more, more creative control over that. Okay. So that's why I'm gonna, and then that's us going against the odds. Right. I'm gonna pick that one. But uh -huh. uh, money, power, respect. I had a damn great time. Mm. You guys feel like a you were the, damn great time <laughs> with, with with we are the streets. Even like down to the skits. You know how they say now the best way to deal with the internet is lean into the shit. Like you can't beat the internet. Mm -hmm. The way the skits are even on we are the streets. Shouldn't fight the yep. internet. But y'all y'all even people, started the skits. don't give people them choices. Like, no, because my state matters, so I got to say it because we hear Like, a lot of people are going to hear that and think, no, I can't beat the internet. You could beat the internet by not fighting the internet. Right. You could beat the internet by knowing 
this is a fight I don't want to have. And that's the that's the that's how a smart person fights a fight. Like if right. this is a if this is a fight I can't win, I'm gonna relax off of it so I can find out a way to win. Mm -hmm. Or even if you could if you can make a bully not want to involve you mm -hmm. or come to you, yeah, you won the fight. Right. And I, I think how y'all deal with what they were talking about after Money Power Respect on those skits with We Are the Streets is how people can deal with the internet now. Mm -hmm. Lean into the shit. Did you ever say, oh, fuck the locks, all the shit that y'all had put into yeah. the, that part was like, yeah. yo, all right, we hear what the fuck people are saying. Here's clearly proving y'all wrong. People say what other people that they think are important say. Yeah. That's been even before the internet. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, uh, and then like, even so with the point of the matter, Nobody said no shiny suits until we said no shiny suits. That's that wasn't, there wasn't no one complaining about it, <laughs> yeah. saying anything about it, yeah. anything. We brought to people's forefront, fuck the shiny suits. And then it was like, oh yeah, fuck, fuck the shiny suits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So even with what, what, like, even as you got to think about it, we didn't really care because we gave out a lot of mixtape content of showing people that even when, anytime where people's, during, if you look at that time period, mm -hmm. there's nobody's ass we didn't bust on a mixtape. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to hear the locks and we're going to be in that first slot on that mixtape. Yeah. Because we fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. We're fucking your beat up. Mm -hmm. We're really saying some shit over it. Mm -hmm. We're dumping on it. And lyrically, we're from, you just didn't know about us. Yeah. Where we were from to the point where we're running this shit and telling niggas, Y'all can't fuck with us. Mm -hmm. You know it. We know it. Mm -hmm. It's easy to see. Mm -hmm. It ain't hard. To, so we never really kind of worried about that because we stayed busting ass no matter how you how you look at it. Like, and, but so even if people yeah. said, All right, they, we didn't like, we didn't love that debut album. It's not as hard as your mixtape shit. Well, here's more mixtape shit. Right. And hold on to that. Right. I'm glad you said as far as busting ass. So let's 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 go to the which is probably the most memorable and best verses we had, uh, the locks and dip set. Now, when that verses was announced, I couldn't believe how many people on the internet were like, the locks is in trouble. Dip set. Being from New York, loving both groups, being old enough to, 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 to know what the feeling was when both groups dropped their first projects. And I was just confused. I'm like, oh, y'all don't know the locks. Y'all don't know what's there. I'm like, okay, so this is going to be interesting because now you have the younger generation that owns the mm -hmm. internet. This is what they're saying. They're going with Dipset. But then the people that are a little older than the internet are saying, y'all don't know. Do about you remember our conversation uh, backstage at Bank Show? Yeah. Rest in peace to Hovain. Yeah. We had, we had talked about this exact thing, I think maybe a week before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and say, yo, if y'all don't come out there with fuck you immediately. <laughs> Bro, I, I just, I, I still watch that versus to this day. I still watch it. That night to me was important for a lot of reasons because number one, it showed a, 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 a huge audience who the locks were. Um, but then it just highlighted to me the authenticity and just what hip hop really is about, the battle. Two groups on stage, classic records from both sides, uh, a lot of influence on hip hop period on both sides. But I gotta be honest, I thought that event was going to go left <laughs> because <laughs> I said, mm -hmm. yo, the shit that was being said, Sheik said some of the most disrespectful <laughs> shit before a single record was played. And I said, I looked at my man, I said, this event is going to get shut down. I said, there's no <laughs> way, there's no way that this is going to make, like, we're not going to hear any records. Because it was too many people on stage. And I could just, Sheik is walking around like he on the yard. <laughs> Kiss is just looking like, yo, let's just get this shit started because they don't have a chance Styles know they don't have a chance, so he walking around just looking at everybody laughing, and I'm like, yo, this is going to go left. But then we get the music, and Kiss says, because I, you know, the whole, you know, being from 914 at Yonkers, people like to say that's not New York City. That's some dumb shit that, that just gets talked about in New York way too much, but 
I think Cam had alluded to that. Like, we in New York. Like, they go first. Like, we home. And I'm like, all right, here we go with this New York. We, who's from New York? Who's not? And, and Kiss, Kiss says, said, you you've been living in Miami, Miami for 10 years or something like that. Yo, drop that. And to me, that was like, that's a movie. That right there is like the start of a movie that, to me, elevated that whole versus platform. Again, that was like a real hip hop iconic moment. And people got to learn exactly who the locks were that night and what they did. And I just didn't understand it because I'm like, if you have a group that was signed to I back- I thought we was super lit before that. <laughs> no, of course. But those <laughs> nah, that know, yeah. Those like, that oh, know, shit, we yeah. Maybe I wasn't lit as we thought it's just we were. the was. internet. And then a lot the of people that's on the facts. internet, Dipset influenced them when they was in high school. They was facts. dressing like Cam and Jim facts. and all. They was doing that's the jewels. So it was just a little right after y'all, that, yeah. that generation. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, they, they don't know. But then when they started hearing the lyrics, and I'm, I'm looking at everybody that's there, like the kind of the younger ones, and they're like, oh, shit. And I'm like, this is what hip hop is. This is MCing. That's the difference between MCing and just rapping. The locks, these are MCs. They know how to control the crowd. They know what they're doing. Lyrics mean something. And y'all was pointing that out. They was like, yo, they don't even remember their lyrics. They're not even rapping. And that was a master class on what MCing and what the art of hip hop is. Talk about what that did for the locks after that versus battle. What did that do for each of you gentlemen? I think it just opened, the, like you said, I think it opened the internet's eyes to who we were. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think within the industry, um, within lyricists, mm -hmm. within people who keep it concrete, mm -hmm. they kind of know what we do, how mm -hmm. we do it. But mm -hmm. uh, that one was more so of like, uh, if you think about it, we just really went to go, we're going to show them what, we had all the verses to see before that. Right. And Kiss was already experienced in the verse. Versus, with Fab. Uh, with Fab. Yeah. And, and um, it's more so a, like if, if I watch... If I watch 20-something fights and I notice what no one did, and then we're going to say, all right, we got to fight now. All right, here's what we're going to go do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and most of the verses before that, it wasn't even just, as you said, it was just a show of, let's show you how we go to work. Right. More so than nobody did that prior to. Yeah. Not saying nobody, but it wasn't just yeah. kind of highlighting in the fashion of yeah. it was more so everybody looking cool, looking fly. Mm -hmm. um, I would say Gucci and Jeezy was kind of chippy too. Kind of? In, in, in a different way. Yeah, that was, it was chippy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was chippy, but yeah. uh, I, think it would, I think it was just the timing of being the first event that happened um, since Corona that where people were outside. Yeah. Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Uh, my sister Angie saying this is for the belt of New York. Yeah. Uh, basketball players chiming no, th in. This was a real this, event. Yeah, it became a, a real. Yeah, no, this was very it, it real. That Joe took his became, mask off. Yeah. It became really, really. This was big. It started being big and we understood yeah. that let's just go to work. Yeah. Let's do what we do. That's what I say about staying on the cycle and staying dedicated to your craft. That's mm -hmm. what that means. It's like, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't expect the outcome to be anything where it would be embedded as a moment in hip hop. And it's a moment because it's two big groups. Absolutely. It's, it's New York. Those are our Absolutely. brothers. We Absolutely. love, oh, no, for we sure. love Kim, for um, sure. Jim and Jim. Absolutely. Those are, we, we from the same few years Absolutely. ahead of them, but from Absolutely. the same journey and same journey as New York people. So it was more so going, all right, it's just work on the craft mm -hmm. and do what we do every single night. Mm -hmm. when other, anybody who, like you say, you've seen the lock show before. Absolutely. So you know what a lock show is about. Mm -hmm. You've heard the locks battle Rockefeller, G Unit, mm -hmm. uh, talk shit on mixtapes. So in your mind, it's like knowing the repertoire. Right. The internet's mind, you know, is 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 a is a is 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 luch. Yeah. Me and yeah. Kiss, and they, they don't really... They don't know. They didn't know the history but is. That's what They didn't the go that far back on the history of what we did. And I think that night made them look at that night and then start diving in to history and going, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. I remember one day, I kind of knew it was like that from... Uh, shout out my brother Currency, but I remember being on tour with Currency. And then every night a fan would go, come to me or hit me late on a thing like, your show was dope. 
But then I went back and looked at your catalog and like, holy fuck, bro. Like, <laughs> I didn't know you did that. Like, <laughs> it's like, you gotta know you got what what times you're in. Like, yeah. you're saying nothing, yeah. but so um, Yeah. But that has to feel good as 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 a as a rapper. As a yeah, MC, I mean, it did a lot. It did a lot. To, it did a lot for for mainstreamness. I guess you would yeah. want to say that that catapulted us back into to the mainstream and people going and looking like, oh shit, wait, big you guys, you guys were the strange guys yeah. from a town nobody knew <laughs> yeah. that was drafted by Puff yeah. at the realest time. we like, you know, it made people yeah. look at different times and go back to time periods and listen to certain shit. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, I didn't know you did this. Oh shit, I didn't know you did that. Mm -hmm. and it, but more so important than that, it was more like the youth going, I'm gonna learn my rhymes. Exactly. I'm gonna stop rhyming over the words. Exactly. Like, I didn't like you know, and mm -hmm. I think that was the important part to go. Like this is a craft. At Absolutely. The, end of the, the, day. the brotherhood shit, I think, was what showed in that because that not to say it was another show for y'all. Y'all had done that a million times. It yeah. was easy to do all y'all records in a verses, whereas Jim, Cam, and Joel's sometimes don't always get along or perform together. And they were fumbling. All right, we're well, gonna do this record. Comes with different faces. Of, of course, their brotherhood is different. And I'm saying the performing brother, one. Yeah, it, yeah, it showed. Mean, they, that's like, what really they've showed. Been, they've been. Um, you got to think they all have, like we've all separate. But even during the kiss run, you're gonna see me. You're gonna see Sheik there. Yeah. Even during the my run, mm -hmm. yeah, you're gonna see them. Like mm -hmm. so, even if we're all those Sheik shit, whoever shit it is. No matter what run, you're gonna see the other two pop up right. at yeah. some point and do whatever. So it's the more time of having that timing and saying this is what we do. And then on top of that, we people tend to look at albums like I said, like we share the same studio. Mm -hmm. So even when we're not working, it's like we fucking hanging out together and doing what we do. And then there's some work out the month to do, yeah. no matter who shit it is. So that plays a big difference between. Kim, Kim, um, Jim and Jules don't probably work in the same studio at all times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, like if you look at my phone right now, me and Lucian, we ain't talking about no rap. We're talking about the Righteous Gemstones. Yeah. Right. Yo, did you see that <laughs> oh, season? Yo, you seen that season? Classic. Like, like uh, me and Kiss, we on a text about business, and then I just text him. He's like, I gotta call you over this, P. He's dead. You asked me about it, like <laughs> I know you how. Like you know what I mean. So our our connection and what we do. Mm -hmm was just different at the time. Yeah. Let's talk about uh your chem your chemistry with currency because I think that's something unique. How did how did that relationship happen and we're potheads, man, and we work a lot. So that's what it is. Yeah. It just y'all connected heads, like that. We work a lot. Um I think we like the same shit. Chiba sweatsuits and fast cars. That's a fact. They, that simple. We like the same shit. Yeah, we we into pretty much the same shit, man. Like you know, so it's it's easy to uh, and I admire his hustle. Like I admire his hustle and what he yeah. built for himself. Like I feel he's a he's a he's a a, a mega star mm -hmm. that doesn't want to be a star, right? And that's something that somebody like me could really appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just the way he carries himself, the way he treats his crowd, mm -hmm. the way he treats his um you yeah. know, his cult following, yeah, the way he embodies it, and the way he goes about supplying them. Mm -hmm. And a story, you know. Yeah, I think it takes it, it takes a it takes a a confident man that has to be confident in himself, but be willing to not accept what the norm is for anybody to say. I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be in this pocket in a creative lane. Like uh, I'm fond of people who've created a lane. Mm -hmm. Like um, that's something I had to do practically my whole life. So. Right. It tickles me to see somebody else do it. And I always just have an admiration for people who do that and find a way to make a way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in a, in a situation where most people wouldn't go that route. Yeah. You talked about retiring. Do you still, uh, do you mean from rap? No, just as a soloist. Okay. Like this will be not from next the locks. album will be, yeah, not from the locks. I still will do, um, you know, um, collaboration projects yeah. with a few people. Okay. But as a soloist, I think I've given more than enough. Okay. Over the years. I think I've done my I think I've done well over my job, to be honest with you. You plan on doing a beloved part two with Dave? Beloved part two is done, to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. Beloved part two song wise is done. Probably got to touch up a few few songs. God bless my brother Hovain when he passed it kind of just put everything in a loop of um 
Mm-hmm. He stay busy. I stay busy. That's my baby, bro. Though, man, mm-hmm. I got a, I got a, I got a real love for East in my heart, man. Yeah, but it's like my baby, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Genuine, genuine human being. But before genuine you, genuine brother. Oh no, fuck with Dave. Before you retire, though, I, I just afford, as a soloist. But that's what I'm saying. But even I, 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 I me personally, I'm just, just my personal, one of my favorite MCs ever. I just need a a full joint with Alchemist. And, Everybody and always asks me. That's like, what I do. Yeah, like that's bef- my guy right there. Before that's you hang guy, it up, could you yeah. just that's put, my can guy. we just get an EP or something? I, I try to get him on a, more than a few joints on this. Oh man. Like uh that's a collab project though. That's that'll be considered that is. a collab. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't just be, yeah. be me, because Al could rhyme too. Oh no, like, I, I I talk shit about him with yeah. the Larry June uh project. But he said, I'm, I'm a big bowl of macaroni, some shit. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I see him, I say, I was a bad man. Because he could rhyme too. A lot yeah. Of people, um, oh, no, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I, I love him as an artist and just a genuine human being. One of the most solid. Yeah. He's, he's, it's, I, I really enjoy uh, doing studio sessions with Al. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of people I enjoy sessions with, but yeah. uh, Alchemist's personality and just who he is, how he goes about it. Uh, mm-hmm. I always tell him, I'm like, man, I'd be fucking mad when I hear him make dope shit with other people. I'm like, I would have murdered that. I would have fucking slaughtered that beat if you would have gave it to me. Like, but Al, he's a, he's a great dude. One of the best, man. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd watched an old interview you did, and I don't even know if you remember it, but I identified with it. Do you still suffer from rage? Not as much. I think you never, I, I don't think you ever stop suffering from it once you suffer from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I don't suffer from it. I still deal with it. Same. I don't yeah. suffer from, I don't suffer anymore because I figured out a ways um, to, to, yeah, I would say pretty much control it. Like, mm-hmm. and, and, and just be more thankful of the great shit that's happening in my life and not really um, let what other people do. Like Miguel Ruiz got a great book, The Four Agreements. Um, I think living by the Four Agreements makes it easier to deal with life. Um, the Four Agreements are be impeccable with your word, always do your best, don't make assumptions, and um, always do your best, don't be make assumptions, be impeccable with your word, and don't take anything personal. Mm. Don't take anything personal as the second. Sac- I have trouble with it's all being four. impeccable yeah. with your word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't take anything personal. Mm-hmm. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. Mm. What, what was the point you thought that you stopped suffering and just started dealing? When I just started dealing. Yeah. And um, to recognize when you got a problem is when you're okay. Mm. If you could recognize you got the problem, then you could figure out how to fix it. And um, for me, it was more, I would say my, Shit, Gangsta and the Gentleman, 2003, going to jail for that mm-hmm. was kind of when I kind of knew that I have to make some sort of change because I'm too smart to let my ego and my pride and my anger drive me to where I'm going. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It still happened. It was still things were happening, but I believe that was the spark mm-hmm. in my head. It took years to apply it the correct way I wanted to correct it mm-hmm. and do, but it was like the spark happened with just being like, I know I'm too smart to be in this position. Whatever happened to, uh, who was your man? Uh, Genovese. Geno's still doing good. Yeah. He out there, yeah, man. He was all right. Yeah, definitely was. Yeah. Genovese, Casino. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, those were two of my roommates, actually. Oh, for real? Yeah, you know the, yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah. Yeah. Genovese. For sure. We used to have a, uh, uh, Apartment in the hood where everybody used to come to our shit. Okay. Like, um, yeah, our apartment was something crazy. The only thing that was in the fridge was probably work. <laughs> <laughs> work and a couple two liters, water here and there. Uh, the only thing in the fridge Liquor. was work. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say uh you have one of the most important rebrands uh in hip hop because um your thing now with pushing uh with health and, and people I mean, I'm taking care of their health and their bodies and their minds. Um, Juices for Life, uh, your juice bar that you, want, it originated in Yonkers, but now there's a few. No, it originated on Castle Hill. Then oh, that was the first Yonkers. one? Okay, so Castle Hill. Yeah. I know there's one, um, 
they told me there's one in Fordham, I think. Oh, yeah, Fordham Tremont. We had one in Brooklyn with Ye and them, but we shut that down. Okay. We, we may do a rebrand and figure some things out. But we have one in White Plains, one in Yonkers, three in the Bronx. Okay. Tremont, Castle Hill, Fordham. How, how important uh, was that for you going into that when you said, um, I want to start, you know, teaching my people about taking care of their health, putting better things in their body? especially as we get older, it's important to take care of our health. How important um, was that for you to, to really sit down and say, I have to make this happen? Uh, it was some, I think when you, anything um, I believe in, I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? To understand, one, I mean, I've been in hip hop for actually more than half my life, for almost all my life. Mm -hmm. So to understand what hip hop is a braggadocious sport, mm -hmm. which it should be, but understanding the effect that it plays mm. on the hood, mm. you know, um, as I say, I'm blue collar hip hop, so I'm kind of outside. Like I know that's the new, yeah, <laughs> the new yeah. slang or the new term, but I've yeah. really yeah. always been outside. Right. Like so, yeah. from seeing what happens in the community to understanding that, uh, yo, bro. You can't afford a hoop ride, mm -hmm. but you got Bentley dreams. That shit don't add up and it's not going to connect mm -hmm. if you don't feel good about yourself and you're not doing the right things. You mm -hmm. can't mentally take care of yourself. Like, and the understanding the chemical imbalance that I had mm -hmm. and what affected me and the things that played part of me is kind of like once you see the mistakes and you could clearly see them mm -hmm. and then being um, fortunate enough to move to a a more affluent neighborhood and, mm -hmm. and see the differences in the grocery stores, the yeah. regular stores. Mm -hmm. It's not a liquor store everywhere. It's not a fast food thing mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, the school system is better. Like in in the hood, if they have, you have a difficult time learning, they put you in special ed. Right. If you're in the burbs, they find a some kind of assisted program mm -hmm. to make sure you learn different and have a, mm -hmm. like, so seeing the differences in everything that happens to more affluent neighborhoods, to neighborhoods that's like where I'm from, mm -hmm. kind of put the battery in my back to be just like, let me tell you, just try to feel better about yourself, juice up, take care of yourself, mm -hmm. and you stand a better chance in conquering whatever you trying to, you know, defeat. Mm -hmm. And... And most, most of us are trying to just defeat a hard time, mm -hmm. poverty, mm -hmm. not feeling well, right. uh, you know, the odds. Mm -hmm. And once you have that in play, though, it makes everything a little bit easier because when you feel better about yourself, mm -hmm. it's easier to approach anything that you have to approach. Absolutely. You you was definitely um, a big part of this whole juice bar wave that's going on. Right? And I'm not mad at it because I, I do love the yeah. fact that there's more than popping up you know, in the hoods, we got a juice bar everywhere now. But you, but you were definitely the one that I think showed people in the hood, yo, this is cool too. Like us going yeah. to the juice bar, getting our green juices every day, um, putting the right things in our body um, is, is is cool too. So a lot of these juice bars, old styles are check. Nah, they don't owe me, they don't owe me out. And I say that with this because juice ain't like any other industry, the health industry, period. Right. It's our job all to be... Once you get the message, it'll be a message. Share it. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not trying to, like I don't, I don't get nothing off of coming out being like one because there was a Dick Gregory before me, although it's not hip hop. 100%, yeah. There's a Dick Gregory. There's Doctor Zebby's. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people who've been preaching fruits, veggies, eating plant based. Take your herbs or oils mm -hmm. way before me. Mm -hmm. I'm just in hip hop. I'm boisterous. I'm loud. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate. The platform quiet. is different. Yeah. The platform is different, so I can't take. The job is the, I think when you come with the, I'm the first one to do it and I'm this, and yeah. it takes the meaning out of the message. For sure. The message is for all of us to be the messenger. Mm -hmm. So they don't owe me nothing. They doing it. They doing what they supposed to do with mm -hmm. paying it forward. So that's yeah. kind of how I take it. That's how I've always approached it. Mm -hmm. um, those who know, know. Yeah. I've been doing it for a while. I've mm -hmm. been preaching it for a while. Mm -hmm. And I, if I would, if I would say... If I would have the mind state like they owe me, mm -hmm. that means I did what I did for nothing because my point was that we need to spread the message. Right. We need to spread the message and not for me to, it's impossible for me to be the one to put mm -hmm. as of now. Mm -hmm. 
it's impossible for me to be the guy to put one in every hood, everywhere. Mm-hmm. But health is for every hood, everywhere. Absolutely. So I can't have that mind state going into it. I'm just a messenger as my partners and who do it with me, mm-hmm. as in anybody who's doing what they do, because this is meant to go way beyond my lifetime. Absolutely. Like there's a fast food place pretty much in every hood. Mm-hmm. So until there's a juice bar and something healthy or something healthy to do in every hood, mm-hmm. I, that's what I want to see happen. So I don't really, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't trip off of I getting the notoriety. Off, I don't, yeah, I don't trip off the notoriety. No, I just think that it, it's dope because again, you, you know, you definitely was the one that started the whole wave of the whole juice bar, and I love it. I love the fact that a lot of dudes are they hang out at the juice bars now, they yeah. kick it there. You know, what I mean, they juice up all day. I mean, I think that's that that's some dope shit, but. I do want to, you know, salute you because you definitely Thank one you. of the biggest influences on that. Thank you. Becoming a more present thing in the hoods. 100%. Yeah, we got to do that because if you think about it, <clears throat> especially in any hood, whether you add hip hop in or not in, this is what I'm saying about backwards thinking and programming. So you got to look at the program sometime mm-hmm. and go, all right, it is what it is, but how do I reprogram? Yeah. How do I reset the structure? Mm. Like the most, the most shit that most hoods deal with, hood individuals, whether it's actually someone on a corner mm-hmm. or a mom working, mm-hmm. a dad working, a mom raising kids on her own, somebody just trying to figure out how to better their lives, get out the situation they're in, is survival. Mm-hmm. That is the most number one priority in most hoods, mm-hmm. whether you subconsciously or consciously know it, yeah. it's survival. Yeah. I got to figure out how to survive. I got to figure out mm-hmm. how to get this bread, how to mm-hmm. take care of my seeds, take care of myself, take care of my family, mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. Now, with that being said, we've often looked at survival from the wrong aspect. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of understood and overstood or grasped that. All right, survival may come from a different aspect than how we're looking at it mm-hmm. because we seem to chase um, either two dreams. You're either chasing the American dream or the hip hop American dream. Right. Like, and, and chasing both of those, what are your best chances in, in making it? One is being the best you you could be. Mm-hmm. And that comes along with just not even saying being health, not being plant-based or none of that, but that comes along with balancing yourself out. I mm-hmm. I fucked up last night. I drank, I smoked. Mm-hmm. All right, let me drink a couple cups of water today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't saying you're going to quit drinking or smoking, but right. all right, let me throw some veggies on the balance, plate. Balance. Let me get some water. Let me yeah. balance it out. And once I start understanding that's not presented enough, um, it became my mission and now I feel good. I don't. I don't want the process because what I came to do is being done. Mm-hmm. Like what what I want to do, what I want to see be seen done. I doubt I'll be alive for. Mm-hmm. But I feel good with what you just said because that makes me know that it's off to the races and mm-hmm. that it's gonna happen. Yeah. One day, whether it be in you know when my son is in his forties or fifties or mm-hmm. doing his you know one of my. Uh, one of his kids when he we has one's time, at some point in time there'll be health in every hood. Right. Mm-hmm. Unless the world goes down or makes some kind of mm-hmm. drastic turn, God willingly. Right. At some point we'll get the the idea and the understanding of this needs to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This balance needs to be be here because it's a ton of fucking liquor stores. Right. And so we need a ton of juice bars. Like mm-hmm. um even with pharmacy for life, like it's um mm-hmm. We're fortunate enough to see people take the next step with us also. Mm-hmm. So I started with juicing, which is always going to be because the foundation is really what you eat and what you drink, what you put in your body. Mm-hmm. Like e- every day, like I even like people are coming to pharmacy, right? Um, we have the e-commerce store, but we have the store in Scarsdale. And I like nice shit. Yeah. Like I'm <laughs> I'm slightly materialistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I love nice shit. Like, yeah. I don't love it more than my people though. So I don't, right. I have a, I have a, there's a line I won't cross. So like I'll see somebody come in and buy supplements and I have to tell them, I appreciate your patronage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I appreciate your money. Mm-hmm. I want to continue to get your money. Mm-hmm. But if you ain't doing, if you skipping first base, just jumping to second base right. and thinking this shit you're going to take on second gonna base, connect. Yeah. it's going to work. It's not going to work. Right. So there's some people I have to tell every day and I'm like, 
I may be fucking the sale up. Yeah. <laughs> I may be fucking his money up. But that's like you know what I mean? But that's yeah. my job though. That's but that's my just, number like, yo, one. If you're gonna do this, you gotta do that. You gotta yeah. do that. Like yeah. I don't wanna just come take You can't the money come here yeah. from, from Wendy's and all yeah, that. Yeah, like I, you, you come yeah. in with the fucking 20, 40 ounce Dunkin' Donuts yeah, shit yeah, with yeah. the milk in it. Yeah. You know, like, I gotta tell you, bro. Yeah. Like, like, oh, it, bro it don't connect. You know, it's, yeah. It's no. You, know, you just had a cheeseburger. <laughs> like, the black seed oil is gonna help, but like, you might gotta, <laughs> it's like, you got a fast food cheeseburger five days. Too much trans fat in one. I mean, like, you gotta, yeah. the black seed oil is gonna help. Yeah, yeah, but you might wanna not eat that. Part. <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So yeah. it, it comes with that. So the journey is, and the message is, um, I'm a fucking hippie at heart, to be honest with you. If I do something good for you, that's gonna come back, if not for me, one of mine's or the intentional thought, yeah. somebody I'm connected to, yeah. you give out good, good's gonna come back. So I don't just want your money right. like this. I could have been richer right now if just fucking accepting certain people right. of course. at the juice bar. There's yes. bags I've turned away where I was like, yeah, nah. Whew, yeah. Did I just tell him no? Right. There's people I've hung up and been like, yeah, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, but like in my gut, bag. I knew it was right because exactly. it's like you calling me about the bag. Yeah, and That's when you call me is. about the bag first, yeah, we get in the bag and the economics of things. Yeah, it's like ah oh, nah. And then there's also people I sat down with before. You know, when I first started Juices for Life, who were more influential and in that, and heavier in certain situations where I'm telling them. Yo, I got something good. Mm -hmm. This is going. People are listening to me and it's going. And the directions they gave me and the things they told me was kind of so disappointing yeah. that it made me go even fucking harder. Like, oh, yeah. damn, I ain't, I feel like, damn, I ain't, wow, that just shocked me that he said that shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I thought he was on a whole nother mm -hmm. wavelength. Mm -hmm. So when you see that, then it's kind of, it became my, it's like, I guess God put me here to be the one to fucking, um, Right, run my run my mouth on this platform. Yeah, about it. And so <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a rebrand. It's just part of the growth and the maturity. And um, right, I was fortunate enough to want to give out good, and good came back to me. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. I really structured and shit. When we did the first juice bar, I didn't, I had no idea there would be five. I had no right. idea pharmacy for life was coming um, behind it. I had no idea mm. that people would actually listen, and I would be here today mm -hmm. speaking about it. It mm -hmm. was just something I, I believed mm -hmm. and that I believe was right, that I believed I right, this is what what has to be done. And if you gotta be the one to do it, then then do it. Then do it. Um well in closing, uh we want to thank you uh first of all for everything that you've given uh to the culture of hip hop. Thank uh you. everything that you've added to the ecosystem of hip hop, especially with juices for life and pharmacy for life. Um, I think that's a very important uh, branch that you've added to the culture of hip hop, which is health. So uh, we salute you for that. Thank you. Thank just, you for everything. Just as important as money, power, respect. Oh, absolutely. Health. Thank you. Health. Health is even more important than money, power. The most. No, that's, that's, yeah, it is. The most. It, it literally is. You can't have, I mean, you won't enjoy the money, power, respect if you ain't good. If you ain't healthy yeah. for it. So that's it's like that's like a full full circle uh, teaching for us. But um, we thank you. We appreciate you. We thank salute you. On 50 years of hip hop, uh, if you had anything to say to hip hop, what would you say? Thank you. I love you. I appreciate everything you've done for me. You're my all. Um, I wouldn't be here without you. And just even the testament of what you just said, that came from the strength of hip hop. Like I, It, it gave me a voice, mm. um, the means of speaking and connecting with other people that I could have never matched. Even like, you know, some days I wake up still shocked. Like I love this thing of ours so much that mm -hmm. I'm I'm really super grateful to to be part of it and be in it. And um especially there's a lot of dope people who's never made it. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? There's a lot of great, great producers, artists, dancers, whatever you wanna say that hasn't made it. And I have the opportunity to make it. So mm -hmm. I'm shit, I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I'm gonna piss off our amazing production team over here to ask you one last question. Yeah. Can you give me your favorite moment of being around DMX? I have too many of them to actually give, man. I would say just, um, I can't really say my favorite moment around him. I had so many amazing moments, but I would say being able uh, to, I guess, 
know where we come from, know how hard the struggle was, know what he put it into it, know how he remained himself during the whole time and then see him hit that pinnacle of success but still be the same human being. Um, actually, one of my favorite moments, actually, I can say this. One of my favorite moments was, fuck, I'm bad with song titles. Um, I am too. I, I can't remember uh, some classic song. Name. On our last album, About Shit. Yeah, okay. That he's featured on. Mm -hmm. During a session, or we just sat in this, like, I think we was there for the fucking wee hours. Mm -hmm. Like, we, one, I called him, I said, hey, I just need you to do the hook. On this, he was like, fuck that, I'm doing the first. <laughs> like that. And then besides that, we did the song. We stood to early in the morning just speaking about being from Yonkers, making mm. it, yeah. um, mm. where our lives have been. Mm. And just a just he's always been a dog during the whole transition from when I known him as a little kid mm -hmm. to seeing him and seeing him come through the neighborhoods and mm -hmm. knowing him what he, the shit he's done and mm -hmm. and did to making it to that point and then remaining him um remaining himself i know god got a great angel in heaven with him. Mm. one they of the best us. man rest in peace dmx oh, yeah. for sure well, um styles we thank you man thanks for having me thank you no yep. thank you for, for 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 coming through kicking it with us and we definitely want to uh we want to shoot some other shit with you too whenever we get a chance to do for that sure um so yeah, Hip Hop 50, Styles P, SP the Ghost. No, Warrior, 